A man stumbled upon a book that made him burst into laughter. However, suddenly, something grabbed his leg. It was a zombie. Luke took out his dagger and was about to bend down to finish it off. But then another zombie appeared behind him and grabbed him by the collar. With both sides tugging, Luke found himself immobilized. Just then, a stranger appeared, swiftly pulling the zombie off and dispatching it with a single swipe of his knife. Luke felt immensely grateful and wanted to ask for the stranger's name, but the man bolted, clearly avoiding any interaction with Luke. Luke simply said, thank you, and bent down to eliminate the remaining zombie below him. Michonne and the others heard the commotion and rushed over. Upon learning what had occurred, they became instantly wary. There were others here, too. They quickly began to search the area and, after a thorough sweep, found only a backpack hidden behind a bookshelf. It contained a few books and a small amount of food, likely abandoned by the fleeing man. Michonne decided to grab the backpack and leave promptly because, while Luke had been searching for books, she received a radio transmission from the Alexandria safe zone. This message silenced Luke as well. Oh my god. How could this happen? What a kind person just died like this. Soon, the group reached Oceanside. Michonne told them about the whispers undercover and also asked them to rescreen the new people who joined in the last year. There was a possibility that a spy had infiltrated the major settlements. At that moment, they heard a commotion in the distance and rushed to investigate. A man was being held tightly by the residents of Oceanside, seemingly for some wrongdoing. The patrol members claimed he had been acting suspiciously nearby, possibly attempting to steal their sailboat. In the face of the crowd's inquiries the man did not answer, but just struggled on and on. Michonne's powerful aura immediately shook the man. Luke recognized him as the person who had saved him at the library. However, he couldn't intercede because the man had surreptitiously made his way here, damaging the alarm system. It was entirely possible that he was a spy for the Whisperers. Before the man could respond, distant roars echoed through the area, a horde of zombies was approaching. Everyone sprang into action. Michonne took the lead, channeling her pent-up anger into her fierce battle against the zombies. The undercover thing and Siddick's death have made her very angry now. Seizing the opportunity, the man made his escape, stumbling and running for his life. Fortunately, Judith had spotted him and swiftly injured his leg with a well-placed strike. Although Judith was kind-hearted, Michonne had taught her not to trust strangers too easily. When zombies approached, Judith fearlessly charged in, dispatching them with precision. Michonne, hearing the commotion, rushed over, the man sighed in his heart. This pair of mother and daughter are not a good person to mess with. At night the man woke up. He found his hands were tied up and the wound on his leg was also treated. Then Michonne came over. She was ready to have a talk with the man. Had it not been for the man saving Luke, Michonne wouldn't have been so courteous. The man sensed that these people weren't necessarily bad, but they were not soft-hearted either, or they wouldn't have survived this long. So, he admitted, I live on an island with my family, and I came out to look for necessities, not the whisperers. It's true that I intended to steal a boat, but I never intended to harm anyone. Michonne sensed he was telling the truth. However, regardless of his motives, the man had caused damage to Oceanside, and he couldn't simply walk away. You have enemies to fight. What do you mean? Maybe we can help each other out. That got Michonne interested. After their conversation, her brow furrowed even deeper, the man revealed that his island was a naval base, approximately two days' journey from here, and there might be heavy weaponry there capable of wiping out the zombie hordes. Obtaining these weapons could potentially put an end to the whispers. The following day, Michonne instructed the others to take good care of Judith. She didn't want to risk the lives of the others, so she was going to go to the island alone with this man to get the weapons. It was a glimmer of hope. And if it turned out to be a trap, at least the loss wouldn't be catastrophic. However, Michonne's journey would also lead to a discovery about Rick's whereabouts. Meanwhile, on Daryl's side, after a night of traveling, they finally reached the edge of the National Forest. There was indeed a deep pit, but it was empty, devoid of any zombie horde. Daryl cursed, suspecting that the woman had deceived them. Aaron stopped him, saying, this doesn't necessarily mean Mary misled us. Someone set traps along the way, and they're clearly protecting this place. Maybe the zombie horde moved, and we should follow their trail to investigate. Daryl didn't want to do that. He thought it was a waste of time. He might as well go and get Lydia back now. The others had no choice but to follow. Carol stood still very upset and no one wanted revenge more than her. Half an hour later, Daryl led them along the riverbank in search of a way forward. But as they reached a downhill slope, 
Carol sensed movement in the distance. Carol looked closer and saw a bald figure staring at her in the distance. It was Alpha. Carol's chest heaved with emotion. Carol's chest was heaving. Her enemy was right in front of her. She couldn't hold back any longer and rushed in that direction. Alpha also quickly weaved in and out of the woods. She was not a fool and stayed behind. Only a dead end. Carol chased after Alpha with her bow and arrow. The others are following closely behind. They were afraid that Carol's anger would overpower her and she would make a wrong decision. Finally, Alpha ducked into a cave. And Carol followed suit. The others encountered a few zombies outside. And Daryl instructed them to bring Carol back quickly while he stayed behind to deal with the zombies. Carol is really impulsive. What if it was a trap inside the cave? After Daryl finished with the zombies, he came to the entrance of the cave. For some reason, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Nevertheless, since the others were already inside, he had no choice but to enter as well. The interior was pitch black, making it impossible to see what lay ahead. Daryl called out softly, but there was no response. Suddenly, when he reached the ground, Daryl felt like his body was about to fall apart. Naturally, the others fell too, but no one was hurt. When they saw the situation below, they gasped in horror. The zombie horde they were looking for was right here. They cautiously observed the area below, realizing the entire cave was filled with zombies. The sight sent shivers down their spines. Despite their combat experience, they couldn't fathom the consequences of falling into that abyss. Just then, Jerry exclaimed and signaled that something was happening above. Alpha was gazing down at them with a mocking expression. Carol's eyes blazed with fury, but she felt powerless. Alpha taunted her with a glance before turning and leaving the cave. Although Alpha didn't believe the people below could escape, she ordered her followers to watch the exit. Daryl and his group were lucky. Their current location was still safe. They decided to attempt creating a human ladder to try and return the way they came. Unfortunately, the slope was too steep, and Magna tumbled heavily to the ground. With no other option, they had to explore alternative paths. Daryl surveyed the surroundings and noticed water seeping down the opposite wall. There might be a way out. The challenge they faced was that the only way to cross was by leaping from one stone pillar to another in the middle of the chasm. Daryl wasted no time and made the daring jump to the first pillar, landing safely. However, it was an intense test of mental fortitude, as one wrong move could lead to being pulled down by a zombie. The others watched in trepidation as Daryl continued, leaping from one pillar to the next. Daryl reached the second, then the third, and finally, the fourth pillar. Despite his extensive survival experience, he was panting heavily, illustrating the sheer difficulty of the task. With the example set by Daryl, the rest of the group followed suit. They had developed exceptional mental resilience to survive this long in the world, but the ordeal still rattled their nerves. Jerry, the portly man, gave it his all, jumping farther than he ever had in his life. Daryl reached the opposite side and was ready to assist those coming behind him. Ten minutes later, everyone had made it to the other side. Daryl continued to scout ahead. Searching for a passage, he used a match to determine the direction of the wind, knowing that the exit would be where the airflow originated. Two hours later, they hadn't yet found their way out, but they believed they were getting closer to the surface. They decided to take a break, knowing that the Whisperers might be guarding the exit. Aaron even put a meteor hammer on his metal arm, ready to fight. Magna was also lighting matches at this point, using Daryl's method of finding windfalls. Not here, obviously. But when Magna turned around, the others heard the shouts and quickly rushed forward with their weapons. Magna's still alive. If it wasn't for her quick reflexes, Magna would have been killed. The group was ready to rush to her aid, but several whispers appeared in the tunnel. However, they underestimated the fighting prowess of Daryl and his team. In less than three rounds, the attackers were defeated. These people are so strong that the whispers, who are still alive, are so scared that they just run away. They quickly followed the whispers. It was a good chance to get out of here. After a short distance, the whispers disappeared. However, they left an arrow marked on the wall, indicating a possible escape route. Following this arrow, they soon discovered a passageway not too far away. By this time, it was already evening. Alpha returned to the camp and immediately called a meeting of the leadership. She began by saying, Our enemies are definitely watching us. A small group of people has entered our territory and even managed to locate the previous location of the zombie horde. Mary felt a wave of nervousness, fearing that Alpha might see through her as a traitor. Fortunately, Alpha didn't suspect the presence of a spy. She simply believed that there were enemy scouts. Alpha then instructed Mary to relay orders to the border patrols to increase their vigilance. Mary left, her mind racing with thoughts of their next moves. As dawn broke, 
Daryl and the group had spent the entire night searching, but they still hadn't found any signs of the Whisperer's entrance or exit routes. They were navigating through narrow crevices. Relying on their experience, Daryl managed to climb out of a hole, ready to assist the others. Everything was going smoothly until Jerry encountered a problem. Jerry's large frame made it difficult for him to navigate the narrow passage. At this moment, Jerry thought he heard something and gestured for everyone to be quiet. Using his flashlight to peer behind them, he made a horrifying discovery. Several zombies had been trailing them the entire time. Panic swept through the group. If the zombies caught up to Jerry, his chances of survival were slim. However, as Jerry moved forward, he found himself wedged in the tight space. Unable to proceed, Daryl was frantic, trying to reach out and pull Jerry, but it seemed futile. The zombies had caught up to Jerry and grabbed his foot, beginning to gnaw at it. The others urgently reminded Jerry to remove his gear, which might help him escape. Jerry shed his equipment and, driven by a will to survive, managed to crawl free. The group breathed a collective sigh of relief. Connie and Kelly examined Jerry's injuries and found that, luckily, only his boot had been bitten through. Jerry was unharmed. Jerry heaved a sigh of relief. He had a wife and children waiting for him back home. The zombies that followed them were quickly killed by Aaron. With this immediate crisis resolved, the group took stock of their surroundings. Magna noticed a distant source of light and approached to alert the others. Luckily, Daryl pulled Magna back or she would have fallen. He then ignited a zombie's arm and threw it down below. The brief burst of light illuminated their surroundings, revealing that they had climbed quite high. Magna was terrified. If she had fallen, she would have died a horrible death. Inside the Whisperer's camp, Alpha is a bit pissed off. She sent Mary to the border last night, but the scouts came back and reported that they didn't see anyone at all. Combined with the fact that their enemies could accurately locate zombie herds, it wasn't hard to suspect that Mary had likely betrayed them. Alpha immediately ordered Beta to stealthily infiltrate the Alexandria safe zone and bring Mary back alive. She intended to execute Mary in front of everyone, so their people would witness the consequences of betrayal. Within the Whisperer's ranks, Negan was diligently working. Alpha approached Negan and motioned for him to follow her. They entered a forested area, and Alpha instructed Negan to walk ahead without looking back. This made Negan somewhat uneasy, as he had played a similar game during his time as a leader. Tell someone to walk in front and not look back and then kill them quietly. Negan's mind raced with thoughts of whether he should strike first. But just as he was contemplating, Alpha created some distance between them. Negan breathed a long sigh of relief that this wasn't supposed to kill him. Whatever this woman was going to do, he had to go along with it. In less than three minutes Negan was stripped of his clothes and trousers. He couldn't help but wonder what this woman had in mind. Was she planning to torture him? However, when Negan turned around, he was stunned and even a little pleasantly surprised. Alpha had stripped off everything except her mask. And Negan now understood that this woman had taken an interest in him. At the end of the story, the two hugged each other tightly and lived a shy good life.